M1 MacBook Air, M2 MacBook Air, which one of these computers should you buy? Well, in today's video, I'm going to find out. Hey, what's up guys, it's TechZoomer talking to you here. And in today's video, I'm going to compare the M1 MacBook Air against the M2 MacBook Air, the 13-inch version. Because the M1 MacBook Air is only available on the 13-inch option. Yes, these are the two cheapest MacBooks available. The M1 MacBook Air starting at $899 while the M2 MacBook Air started at $10.99 and now it's being sold at $9.99. But if you are on a budget, which one of these two machines should you buy? And what are all the differences between all of these two? I've used both of these machines so I can help you out. And then I will throw out an extra bonus tip because in 2024 there are rumors brewing that the M3 MacBook Air should be coming out in the next few months. So be aware. And yeah, do not forget to drop a like down below, subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys for watching. Roll the intro. So, as I told you before, the M1 MacBook Air is the cheapest MacBook ever made with Apple Silicon, while the M2 MacBook Air is the next generation of this product. These two products are very, very similar, but they have some differences, starting off with the design. As for the design of these two machines, the M1 MacBook Air uses the old MacBook design. This was a design introduced in 2018 with the Intel MacBook Air. This is the second generation MacBook Air in terms of design. The first generation was the original one introduced by Steve Jobs. That one, iconic design. Then the 2018 version iterated on that design, still keeping the same wedge design, very, very thin at one end and a little bit thicker at the other. This design is so thin that when you hold it in your hand, it's just ridiculous. Super light, super portable, and still, in 2024, one of the best designs out there for a very portable laptop. But then, then there's the M2 MacBook Air. The M2 MacBook Air has the new design treatment from Apple, from 2018 and onwards, which is kind of strange, because in 2018, Apple introduced this new design trend with the 2018 iPad Pro, and since then, has adapted every single MacBook lineup, iPad lineup, iPhone lineup, Apple Watch lineup, to this new design. And the M2 MacBook Air is no different. It has this new MacBook design. All the edges have the similar thickness, so no more wedge design. This is more of a squared approach with contoured edges. The edges are not sharp, but the design is much more boxier. So, in my opinion, feels better. It feels more premium in the hand, but it feels a little bit thicker, although it isn't. And yeah, the objective of the MacBook Air is to be very, very thin. And if you want a very thin feeling computer, the M1 MacBook Air will feel the thinnest, but it actually isn't the thinnest. The M2 MacBook Air is thinner, but at the end of the day, which one feels thinner? That's for the M1 MacBook Air. But in terms of portability, they are both the same. They are still very, very portable. Both of these computers are extremely thin, extremely portable and small. They both feature a 13-inch design. And so, if you only care about that, the cheapest computer might be the best option. But the differences do not stop here in terms of hardware. The M1 MacBook Air features an LCD screen with the old bezel treatment. And here, here where the changes begin. Because the newer generation M2 MacBook Air does not feature the old bezel design. No, it features the new bezel treatment that Apple gave to the MacBook Pros in 2021. Then, in 2022, launched this incredible M2 MacBook Air with very, very thin bezels and the notch. So yes, the M1 MacBook Air does not have a notch and has a 16 by 10 display. While the M2 MacBook Air does have a notch, and it has a 16 by 10 display. So the same aspect ratio, 16 by 10, that all the MacBooks have, but one does not have a notch, so it doesn't have any type of intrusion in the display, while the other one does have a notch. But I've been using the notch since 2021 on my MacBook Pros, and then for about one month on the M2 MacBook Air, and then for about another month with the M2 MacBook Air 15 inch this summer, I gotta tell you, I don't care about the notch. I forget that that is there. And I think you will. So I don't see the problem there. So again, this new MacBook Air with the M2 does have the smaller bezels, while the M1 MacBook Air doesn't. In terms of the displays, they are both LCDs. They are both really great. They are both retina displays, so you won't be able to see pixels at a normal viewing distance. And contrast ratio, colors, it's a P3 color gamut display, so it's very color accurate. All of these displays are really, really good. But the M2 MacBook Air, I think, has 100 nits more in terms of brightness, so outside could be a bit brighter, if that's very important to you. 
So in terms of displays, in terms of hardware, they are both very, very, very similar. The only difference is actually the M2 MacBook Air has way smaller bezels and the design is a bit more boxier, newer, and it has more I.O. While the M1 MacBook Air does not have as much I.O., has the older wedge design and it has way thicker bezels. But still, the keyboard is the same. They both have Touch ID. They both have the same trackpad. So in terms of keyboard, trackpad, you will be very, very well served. They are both the newer generation Magic Keyboard, no butterfly keyboard on any of these machines. And the trackpad is big, huge, responsive, haptic. So they are perfect, perfect combination. A very good keyboard, a very, very good trackpad. that is really, really big on a very, very portable computer. Both of these computers have these advantages and I cannot notice the difference between one keyboard and another, one trackpad and another. So here is a tie in terms of keyboard and trackpad. They are both really, really good. In terms of I.O., this changes a bit. The M1 MacBook Air only features two USB-C ports and one headphone jack. So if you want to charge this computer and connect to an external SSD, boom, you're done. No more USB-C available. While the M2 MacBook Air does feature a MagSafe port. This enables you to free up one USB-C port while you are charging. This is kind of genius from Apple because the MagSafe port is safer than USB-C. If you trip on your charger, the MagSafe will remove itself without breaking your computer and it frees up a USB-C port. I think that in terms of I.O., the M2 MacBook Air is miles ahead because while you can use your USB-C ports and then connect to an external monitor, connect an external SSD and then charge, while the M1 MacBook Air having only two USB-C ports, which are both Thunderbolt 3 ports, or at least USB-C 3.0 speeds, I mean, you are kind of limited with the amount of I.O. But if you are a student or someone that doesn't really need that much of I.O., then who cares? The M1 MacBook Air is cheaper, $100 cheaper, the same keyboard, the same trackpad, overall the same experience in terms of hardware, which has the older edge design, but if you like that, totally fine. And in terms of hardware at the end of the day, they will be very, very similar. Although another big difference is in hardware, and this one is actually very, very important if you do really care about FaceTime or video conferencing, Zoom, whatever, the M1 MacBook Air only features a 720p webcam, which is terrible. <clears throat> I'm so pissed off by Apple, like 720p in 2024, terrible, terrible option. Yes, this machine was released in 2020, but still, 720p, not even 1080p. <sighs> well, the M2 MacBook Air does feature the 1080p webcam, which is miles ahead better. So if you do a lot of video conferencing, zoom, pay the extra $100 for the webcam, totally, totally worth it. On top of that, you will get the new design and the smaller bezel treatment and the M2 chip. So if you do really care about the webcam and video conferencing, just upgrade for the M2 MacBook Air. In terms of speakers, the M2 MacBook Air is a tiny, tiny, tiny bit better. Like the difference is negligible, maybe because of the M2, maybe because of some tweaking of the speakers, but the drivers are probably the same. The speaker quality is a tiny bit better. It has less noise, but the other day, the speakers are really, really good, worse than the MacBook Pros, but better than almost all of the Windows laptops out there. So if you want a very portable machine with amazing speakers, both of these computers will serve you very, very well. And they are both very, very similar. So if you do really care about good speakers on a laptop, don't worry, both of these machines have amazing, amazing sound. In terms of microphone, I do believe the M2 MacBook Air is a bit, bit better because it's newer and Apple has invested more time in the audio quality from this microphone. Then the biggest differences between these two machines are obviously the chips. The M1 MacBook Air has the M1 chip. The M2 MacBook Air has the M2. And you're probably asking, what are all the differences between the M1 and the M2? Easy. The M1 was the first generation Apple Silicon chip and introduced a new generation of computing power. These are very power efficient chips and the M1 was a complete revelation, innovation in the history. 
while the M2 was a small iteration over the M1. The M2 is about 15 to 20 percent faster than the M1 in single core performances, and in multi-core performance is also about 10 to 15 percent faster. While on GPU, I would say it's about 20 to 25 percent faster. But again, this also sips more power. But Apple managed to get the same battery life on both of these machines. So at the end of the day, they are really both very efficient and the M1 MacBook Air is a bit slower, but again, it's $100 cheaper and if you go find it itself or used or refurbished on other markets, it will be much, much cheaper, like $600, $500. So yeah, saving $400 on a used or refurbished MacBook Air gets you the M1 chip, gets you still the amazing design that Apple actually constructs these computers, aluminum, the keyboard is insane, the trackpad is really, really good. And yeah, you don't have the M2 chip, one of the newest Apple silicon chips. And no, you don't have the bezel-less treatment, but you do get a very good value machine. And if you decide to go for the M2 MacBook Air, be aware that this machine will be very, very good, but, but it will be replaced in March, which leaks are saying that the M3 MacBook Air will be released. So this is the part of the video that I tell you. Hold on a second. These 14 minutes of video that I've been talking about now, they have one problem, that the M3 MacBook Air is coming out. And this, this changes everything. Because I do believe that when the M3 MacBook Air comes out in March, April, or even this year of 2024, whenever Apple decides to launch this new machine with the M3 chip, this comparison won't make as much sense. Because the M1 MacBook Air will probably be replaced by the M2 MacBook Air on the lineup. So Apple will put the M2 MacBook Air a bit cheaper at $899 for the base model and the M1 MacBook Air will be killed. So you won't be able to find it new, you just will be able to find it refurbished or used. And in that case, it will be very, very cheap, like six, dollars $500 and the price on the used market will drop even further. And for most of you that don't really care about buying machines refurbished or used, that's the best deal available. Like these machines are still super, super powerful, the M1 chip will cover all of the needs that you have. Trust me, it had its 4K footage on Final Cut Pro, edits photos, edit videos like the charm. It's completely, completely fine. You can play games on it. It's completely overkill for most people. While the M2 MacBook Air will turn out to be an amazing, amazing deal. Again, the rumored differences between the M3 MacBook Air and the M2 MacBook Air is just the M3 chip. And the M3 chip only brings to the table the new GPU performance on the M3, which is about 25 to 30 percent better, about 15 to 20 percent better CPU performance, which is actually something. But if you don't really need ray tracing, then I don't think it's worth it to buy the M3 chip. Maybe because if it's more efficient, built on a three nanometer architecture, the battery life will be a bit better. I'm not sure, but saving $200 or even $100, I think it will be worth it. If you don't care about performance, if you don't get the new three nanometer GPU performance chip on this M3, then saving $100 and getting the same machine for $899 is an amazing, amazing deal. But let's not forget about the M3 MacBook Air for a second. Let's now only focus on the new and current machines. Yes, the only machines you can buy right now. All of the rest is just speculation. The M1 MacBook Air comes out at $899 new from Apple and gives you 256 gigabytes of storage and 8 gigabytes of RAM. Be reminded that this storage is not bin storage. So what I mean is, this is not slow SSD. Apple, when launched the M2 MacBook Air, they did some trickery where they put slower SSDs on the base model, the base 256 gigabyte of storage. So actually, the speeds of the SSDs of the M1 Air will be faster than the M2 Air. And this, this could impact performance on heavy, heavy tasks. Because the 8 gigabyte of RAM version of these MacBooks, it starts to consume on the SSD when it needs more RAM. It will get RAM from the slower SSDs inside of the bigger NAND that it has of the SSD. Instead of just using the pool of 8 gigabytes, it will get more RAM out of the SSD. This will deteriorate faster your SSDs, and if you have slower SSDs, your computer will get slower. So the base models, they are kind of not usable right now because the M1 Air with 256 bytes of storage, it's fast storage, yes, but it's only 256. And after a while, like six months of use, normal use, you don't need to download movies, you don't need to download anything, it will fill up. It's a machine, it's a computer, it happens. While the M2 Air, the same thing. Eight gigabytes of RAM, I think it's plenty enough, but I think you'll need to buy more storage at the end of the day. And 
upgrading storage via Apple is not the better option. If you want to do so, then buy the M1 MacBook Air and upgrade to 512 gigabytes of storage. That would put you at 1099, I think, which is $100 more expensive than the M2 MacBook Air, but I think it's worth it. But if you want, you can just buy external SSDs. It will be much, much cheaper. You can get one terabyte, two terabytes for the same amount of money that it would have got 256 gigabytes of Apple. And yeah, you will get an amazing, amazing storage solution. The only issue is that it will consume one USB-C port. So in this case, I recommend you getting the M2 MacBook Air because of the MagSafe port that it frees up another USB-C that can be consumed via an external SSD. All of this is very confusing, but what I want to tell you is that you need to expect at least to spend $100 more on an external SSD after a while, because 256 gigabytes of base storage is simply not enough. So in 2024, which of these two machines is better value? If you are going to buy on a third party market, on the used market, the M1 MacBook Air is just unbeatable. You can find it really, really cheap. Third cheap. If you are buying used or refurbished from Apple, then it depends on the prices that you get. If you want the newer design, if you want the newer bezel treatment, if you want the new colors like the midnight blue, then go for the M2 MacBook Air. It's a newer machine, newer design with the M2 chip, which is also a newer chip. So if you want that, feel free to go for it. And if you just want to buy a new computer because of the guarantee or just need to buy a new computer because you are a business and need to buy several of these, then yeah, I do believe that if you don't really need performance, you just want the price. If you are buying like 10 of these, then the M1 MacBook Air is just a better option. Buying the M1 MacBook Air, 10 of these will save you like $1,000 at the end of the day. It's quite significant if you think about it. If you are a normal individual that wants to buy a new machine from Apple and you like the newer design, you like the new colors, the extra $100 will get that you'll get the new design, we'll get the extra performance from the M2 chip, and it will get you one more, two more years of software support. So I don't see why spending the extra $100. At the end of the day, we'll be very, very well served with both of these machines. You just need to know, do you want a new design or do you want to save $100 buying new? Or are you willing to buy a third party machine that is super, super cheap, but you want to risk it? Let me know of that in the comments down below. While you're there, drop a like down below, subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys for watching. Bye-bye.